Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 13 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. The good news is the Kepler kit has all the gear that you will need to complete this class. And most of you guys probably already have your kit, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon and you can hop over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot simpler if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 12. First of all, how many of you guys were successful? If you got the homework done, Leave a comment down below, I am legend, double chest bump. Or if you didn't, leave a comment down below, I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Hopefully most of you guys didn't fold up on this lesson. It really was a pretty, forward, uh, pretty straightforward extension of stuff that I've already taught you, but just good practice to go in and start putting some of those concepts into practice. <clears throat> so let's see where we're going to start. Let's start by looking at the schematic that we did on this. And so this is just a review because it's the same schematic that we did last week. And so this should look pretty familiar to you. I think I better get out of your way and bring that up. So you can see we've got the RGB LED. <clears throat> the left leg is connected through a wire through a 220 ohm resistor over to physical pin 17, which is GPIO pin 13. Then the next leg is the ground. We bring it down to the ground rail, and then the ground rail is connected to this pin 3, which is a ground pin. The next pin is the green pin. <coughs> the green pin goes over to a 220 ohm it goes over to a 220 ohm resistor and then connects to physical pin 19, which is GPIO pin 14. And then finally, the right pin is the blue pin. It goes over to a 220 ohm resistor and then hops on over to pin 20, which is physical pin 15. So hopefully that makes sense. We showed you how to hook that up last week. And so there shouldn't be any real big surprises there. And then this is just a quick look at physically how I put that circuit together so you guys hopefully will already have this will already have this uh, put together from last week's lesson so let's jump over and let's jump over to our code view <clears throat> and this is our code view and let's jump in and start coding okay we're going to be connecting to gpio pins and we're going to be doing pwm and so i'm going to need to say from machine import pin and pwm like that then from time we're going to import sleep because we're probably going to want to put a delay in there now we're going to set up our pins we said the red pin was going to be connected to gpio pin 13 <clears throat> the green pin is going to be connected to gpio 15 no GPIO 14 and then the blue pin is going to be connected to GPIO 15. So we've got our pins to find. Now we need to make them PWM objects. So my red LED object is going to be PWM of the pin of which pin red pin. Close the pin, close the PWM. Then green pin is uh, no green LED, excuse me, green LED <clears throat> is going to be PWM of pin, which pin it is going to be green pin. 
Now, blue pin or blue LED is going to be equal to PWM of pin, which pin, blue pin. A lot like what we did last week, right? So we are going to close the pin and we're going to close the PWM. <clears throat> now we need to go in and we need to actually activate those PWM channels by setting a frequency. So I'm going to say red LED. I'm going to set the frequency to a thousand hertz. In the last few lessons, we talked about how a thousand is a good frequency to use. And then we're going to start with that channel off. And so we're going to say red LED dot duty underscore unsigned 16 is going to be zero. Okay, like that. And then I think that I could probably just snag this <clears throat> and then paste it two times. <clears throat> And then what we're going to just do is say, okay, we've got uh, red, red, and then this is going, ooh, that had a typo in it. Okay, so it is red, red, and then it is going to be green, green, and then it is going to be blue, and it is going to be blue. And so now we've got all of those PWM channels set up. <clears throat> I think now we are ready to begin looping. So I'm going to say while true, when is true, true, true is always true. So we are creating an infinite loop here. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to ask the user what color he or she wants. So I'm going to say my color is equal to, and this is going to be a string, it's going to be a word like red, green, blue, so we don't want to int it, we don't want to float it, we just want to input it. And we'll say, what color do you want? Question mark space. <coughs> close the string, close the input. Now we're going to do different things depending on what the color is. I'm going to say if my color equal equal in a string red then what are we going to do well i need to set those three brightnesses so i'm going to say red bright is going to be equal to 65550 okay and then i'm going to say green bright is going to be equal to zero because we're going to want green off and then blue bright is going to be equal to zero because we're going to want blue off now we need to go in and apply those three so i'm going to say red <coughs> led dot duty okay underscore unsigned 16 the red is going to be what it is going to be red bright like that now the green LED dot duty <clears throat> underscore unsigned 16 bit is going to be green bright. And then the blue LED dot duty underscore unsigned 16 is going to be blue bright like that. <clears throat> okay, that should turn the LED red. Now, what I want to do is I just want to come up here because it's going to be very similar. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to paste it. But this time, instead of my color being red, I'm going to say that it is green. And in that case, we would want to what? We would want to turn red off and we would want to turn green to 65,550. <clears throat> Okay, let's do the next one. This is going to be blue, so we will paste again. And this time, my color is going to be blue. And in that case, we will want red off, and we will want to turn blue on. <clears throat> 65,550. We are getting close to halfway through. And so now red, green, blue, now we were going to do cyan. Now we're going to have to probably tune cyan in, but we know cyan is a mixture of green, 65,550, and then blue, 
is going to turn on 65,550. Now, once we run it, we might have to tune this to get it to look a little better, but that's where we're going to start. <coughs> okay, now we're going to paste again, and we've got cyan. The next one we wanted was magenta. And we know that magenta is a mixture of red and blue. <clears throat> it's magenta is kind of a purple color. 65,550. That looks good. Now let's do yellow. <clears throat> and we'll really have to kind of tune the yellow and the orange. So yellow is going to be a combination of red and green. <coughs> so we're just going to start by making them equal amounts like that. Okay. So we're going to have cyan, magenta, and yellow. Okay. Like that. And now we are going to paste again. And then this time it is going to be orange. Now orange is going to have, uh, it's going to have red, a lot of red, but then we're going to want a lot less green. And so I'm going to put about 10,000 and see if red with just a little green is going to make orange because red with a lot of green makes yellow. So we'll try that. <clears throat> and then I believe the final one that I was supposed to do was supposed to be white. And this one we'll probably have to tune in a lot too. And for that, we're going to turn them all on. <clears throat> okay, so they're all on like that. And then we don't need to put a delay in there because it'll delay when it comes up and asks the question. <clears throat> oh my goodness, guys, how many mistakes did I make in here? We're going to come over and we're going to find out. So I will need everyone very seriously to hold their breath on this. Okay, very seriously, I'm going to need you to hold your breath. Ooh, line 15 right off the bat, denied. Ah, not uppercase W, it is a lowercase W. Hopefully you guys caught that. The real problem was one of you guys didn't hold your breath. I will need everyone to hold their breath this time. Ooh, no, oh, time from time. <clears throat> Got in a little bit of hurry there. You guys should have seen that, caught it. Okay, let's go from, okay, there it is. What color do you want? <clears throat> Let me get out of your way a little bit and let's see what happens here. And we're going to go and we're going to start with red. You've got to match the case of your if statements. You've got to match the case of your if statements. So let's hit enter and Shazam. That turned red. I think you guys can see it a little better if I put the cap on it. Yeah, <coughs> that's looking really good. Okay, now let's try green. Boom, that is a beautiful green. Blue. That is a beautiful blue. Now cyan. Okay, that actually is an amazingly good cyan. That is kind of like that aqua color. <clears throat> you guys can tweak it a little bit if you think you need to get it a little closer, but for me, that looks really good. So we'll look at magenta. That is a most beautiful magenta. Let's look at yellow. And that actually is a really nice looking yellow. Now I'm going to try orange. That is a great orange as well. Hey, I guess those I guess those numbers pretty good. Let's see what happens when we get white. White is actually usually pretty hard to get. But I would say that came out to be a pretty darn beautiful, a pretty darn beautiful white. What do you guys think? I think that came out to be pretty darn good. Okay, guys, that was really a pretty straightforward homework assignment because it was just a logical extension of what we had been doing in the past. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a homework assignment for next week. And the homework assignment for next week is to now connect up three 
potentiometers. Now, I know that your kit only has two, but you should be able to look around and find a third potentiometer. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take that RGB LED and be able to get any color you want by dialing those uh, potentiometers. So since you only have two potentiometers, this is sort of like an extra credit homework assignment. I think most of you should be able to find a third potentiometer, but then I want to see you guys mix and match any color by just dialing those potentiometers. Now, I've shown you how to dial a potentiometer with one LED, and so I'm not going to go in and show you the solution to this homework assignment. Con consider this to be an extra credit homework assignment. And then next week, what I will do in the lesson, we're going to be moving kind of to the next micro Python topic, which is going to be looping. So far, we've written to the GPIO pins. We've read from the GPIO pins. We've done PWM. We've done analog reads. <clears throat> We've done all that type of stuff. We've done conditionals like if statements. We've done compound conditionals. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go in and understand looping. We're going to be doing for loops and while loops. And then I'll give you a, a homework assignment based on that, if that makes sense. So hopefully this, this makes sense to you guys. Hopefully you will uh, be able to do this homework assignment. And man, guys, I hope you all are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. If you're enjoying the class, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below. That always helps us with the YouTube juice. If you've not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you subscribe. When you do, ring that bell so that you get notifications when my future classes come out. And then, as always, make sure you sub make sure that you share this video with other people because the world needs more. More people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.